The sorted list is really simple, and you can see I've got three different types. I have the numbered, bulleted, and generic list. And when it comes to sorting, generally speaking, is that the sort feature will take the first letter of each item in the list and sort it ascending or descending. Now when it comes to the numbered list, you may ask yourself, why would anyone want to sort it? Because it's got its hierarchical structure in place, with one being the most important item. Know that numbered list can also be used for counting up the total number of items. So if you had hundreds of items, and you don't care in some cases about the order, but you want to know the total, instead of counting up each one, if you have it numbered, just go to the last number in the list and go, oh, we have a total of five items I got to bring. So when it comes to sorting, you want to select the list that you want to sort, because if you click anywhere within the list and come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and click on, there it is, A to Z, Sort, click on it, you see behind the window, it selects everything. And I don't want to sort the entire document, just the list here. So I need to click Cancel, click and drag, and select the list. Then come back up here, click on A to Z. And I'm going to work from left to right. So first off, it wants to sort by paragraphs, the default. And then the other options you get are Headings and Field 1. So by paragraphs, let's go ahead and close out. Come up here and turn on the codes. Anywhere there's a paragraph marker, it wants to take that paragraph and sort it. And the way it worked out here is that each line is its own paragraph. So it looks at the first letter in the paragraph, and it says, okay, I'll go ahead and sort that, depending upon your choice, ascending or descending. If it's ascending, then the first letter, S, is at the lower end of the alphabet, so it will be sorted down towards the bottom. Well, actually, it will be at the bottom. And then G for ghost is at the upper end, so it will be number one, then the M's, and then the P's. So there's the paragraphs. Let's go ahead and come back up here, click on A to Z, then you have your headings, and we talked about heading styles. So when you apply heading styles, as you can see up here in the styles group, heading 1, 2, 3, and so on, and you want to organize them so they sort ascendingly or reverse from descendingly. So heading 3 is up at the top, then heading 2, then heading 1, then go ahead and select your sort by option headings. But we don't have any headings here selected, so we can skip that. Then the last one is the field. Now this one's interesting and I may want to actually jump to the next list to go over this one in more detail because when it comes to fields, how does Word know what a field is or what makes up a field? It's based upon the options. So when I click on options, the default is tabs. So it wants to separate fields or count up the number of fields, in this case by tabs. So in the list that I have selected, how many tabs do we have? Remember, the code for the tab is the arrow and I only have one here. So everything to the right of the arrow is counted as one field. Now you've got other options to find out how many fields you can go ahead and sort by or separate at. And you've got commas. So you can see down below I've got commas here and also other. So you can type in whatever character you want to make up the other. In fact, you can see in the list here that I do have spaces. Well, I've got one space there. I have one space in between ghost stories. And then I have, well, this is getting tricksy. Let me click cancel, click cancel, but I have a total of one space between peanut, M, and then a space, and then another space. So I have a total of three spaces. So how many fields does that count up if I choose to be able to sort by fields? Well, if it's counting up spaces and that's the character, it should be a total of four because on the left-hand side of the first space would be one field, and then from that space to the next one is the second, from that one to the next one is the third, from that one to the end is the fourth. So really quickly, A to Z, Options, Other, hit the space bar, click Okie Dokie. Now this will update because it's no longer looking by tabs but by spaces. So when I click on the drop down arrow, how many words does it find? A total of four because there's four fields. And so instead of saying fields, it says it's words. That's all right. So if you want to be able to sort instead of by the first letter of each paragraph here, and you want to sort it by well, choose your field or your word, maybe by the, instead of the first word, which is the same thing as the first letter and the first word of the paragraph, if I chose word number two, then it's going to take and look at, after the first space, into the second field or the second word, which is M and B, and sort everything by that. Ooh, that gets kind of dizzying, doesn't it? So if I want to keep it simple and say, well, for the numbered list, let's just sort by paragraphs, okay? And then you come over here to the data type, and the data type is text, as opposed to, well, sorting by number or by date. So in this training video, we'll keep it simple and just go by text. But once you get the concept, the numbers, the data type, if you're sorting by numbers and by date, is right there. And then descendingly, 
Well, let's just do that. And then click okie dokie. Now when I say that, now you can see that, hey, ascending the upper end of the alphabet G followed by M, P's, and then the S's, or the last one is the S. Now let's go over the fields a little bit more in detail because we can get really crazy on this. Let me turn off the codes. So you can see I've got the, what are known as delimiters, separators for each field. And so I've got a comma that separates last name from the first name. And then I've got the tab that separates the name of the campers from the state that they're camping in. And so let's go back up here as a refresher. There we go. Okay, one tab, one tab. So on the left-hand side of the tab is one field. On the right-hand side is the second field. And let me go ahead and turn it off. The codes, that is. If I say the delimiter, the field separators by comma, I have a total of how many commas? One, two. So how many fields? This is tricksy. So on the left-hand side of this comma is one. Between that comma and the next comma is two. Even though this is separated by a tab, it's just looking at commas. So it sees basically Lisa and Chicago as one field. So you have one, two, and then the last one on the other side of that comma is three. So having said that, let's go ahead and select it and confirm that by coming up here and clicking on A to Z and then clicking on the drop down arrow and it found two fields. Okay, well what are the two fields? It should be the tabs because every time you do this it resets the options to look at separating your fields by tabs. And so remember we have the tab over here from the bullet to the first field and then we have a tab separating that to the second field. So before the first tab is field one, then after that tab is field two. And you can go ahead and do it by commas. Now if I do it by commas and click okie dokie, then it'll update this. So when I click on the drop down arrow, it sees a total of three fields as we just went over. So how is that important? How does that play up? Well, if you want to be able to sort everybody by the first name and not the last name, you got to get over into that field, don't you? And so when you get to that field, It'll look at the first letter in the third field, which is delimited or separated by the commas. So there's field one, comma, field two, comma. So how do you want to do this? Let's go ahead and do it by tabs first. Field one, field two. And so if I come back up here and say we want to separate it by the city, and we'll do it descending. So the S will be up at the top here. Well, the T. Let's go ahead and click A to Z. And then it resets back to the tab as the option here. So when you click on it, you're back to field one and two. So keep that in mind. If not, when you click on it, you'll get the reminder here. So if I go to the second field and I want it descending, that is going to be after the tab, the first letter in the cities. Okie dokie. And it flips, T's up at the top, and then it goes down to the upper end of the alphabet. So it's descending. Cool. Now if I want to do it by first name, I have to identify the field separator, the delimiter, and again, it's the commas, so we can come back up here, A, Z, and then we have to set our options because it always wants to go to the tabs, and we do commas, and then click okie dokie, then we have to choose the field that we want to sort the first letter in that field, so it's not field one because that's the first field, it's field number two, so click on it and say you want field two, and do you want it ascending or descending? I'll let you choose. Okay, great, ascending, thank you. Let's click okie dokie, and so Andrew will be up at the top, right? Because it's ascending. Hey, wasn't that fun? Okay, last but not least is a generic list here where we don't have any offsets by numbers or bullets. We just have, well, let's come up here and turn on our codes. Show. We have it separated by tabs. Oh, okay, and paragraph. So each line is its own paragraph. So when I go ahead and I select this... What is going to be the default delimiter? It's going to be the tab. So we'll have two fields. I have field one, field two. Now this is a bit tricky because I'm selecting the label or the header row, the heading for each columns. So I don't want to sort the item, the name of that column, down with the rest of the items or the description because that would be kind of kooky, right? So you could do it one of two ways. Instead of selecting the header row, you can go ahead and just select the items here and then come up here, click on A to Z. Ooh, look at that. Click on it and let's take a look. Well, it's got Canvas sleeping bag, but it updates and it says we have two fields. Why? Because it's based upon the tab setting. So that's field one, field two. So you want to sort it by description, the first letter in description, or the first letter in items. Let's do it by the first letter in items. Let's do it ascending. So that's field one, remember, because the tab is separating it. Remember, tabs. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do it ascending. Click okie dokie and then it updates it. There you go. Now the other way 
Let's just go ahead and undo that. I know I can go ahead and unsort it as it were. But let's go ahead and select the header row in with everything else. So if you do select the labels or the row that contains the headings for each columns and you come back up here and do A to Z, then make sure that you identify that your list has a header row. And so the cool thing about that is that when you do that, it now identifies this as field one. So it won't say field one, it'll say instead items. Oh, that makes it so much easier because when it comes to several columns, you know, it's hard to go, okay, what was field five again and field three? Then I have to look behind the window, which I can't see, so I have to click and drag to move the window around. Instead, go ahead and include the header row. So when you click on the drop down, you can quickly identify the column that you want to sort by. So if we do it by items again and say, we'll leave it as ascending, then go ahead and click okie dokie. So it didn't sort the items or the label, the header row, with the rest of the items down below. It kept it separate, didn't it?